The story begins, and we see Runa Shirakawa, the most beautiful girl in school, was well known among her peers. Even the quietest students had heard rumors about her being the most beautiful girl in school. Although the title was just a convenient label, as nobody really knew every girl in school, there was a high chance that she truly deserved it. Runa also had rumors swirling around her, claiming that she was a bit of a player, frequently changing boyfriends because she couldn't stick with just one. It seemed like she would only date someone for a maximum of three months, and her taste in partners ranged from older to the same age, and from athletic to artistic. Many hopeful guys thought they might have a chance when they heard that Runa was single, and it was amusing to see them flock around her, even if they weren't particularly good-looking. Ryuto Kashima knew their place and never expected to date Runa. Just catching a glimpse of her from afar would be enough. To them, Runa's presence was like that of the sun, shining brightly and captivating everyone's attention. When Kashima moved up to the second year of high school, his first thought was how lucky they were to be in the same class as Shirakawa-san. A few days later, they were placed in the same class as Shirakawa-san. During homeroom, right before they returned to their seats, Shirakawa-san approached the teacher with a printout in hand. Then, Shirakawa-san made eye contact with him, who had suddenly appeared in front of them from the back of the class. With the printout in one hand, Shirakawa-san asked if he could lend her a pencil for a bit. His heart felt like it was going to jump out of their mouth due to the surprise attack. He ends up lending her a pen leading to small talk, and he thinks about it the entire day before meeting his friends for lunch, who discuss about their low grades and make a bet that which one of them scores the highest would do something the other two say, with a half heart. Kashima agrees. The next day the results come out and both his friends have failed except Kashima, and as per the bet they tell him to confess to his crush in hopes of him failing. He decides to do it, and puts a note in Shirakawa's locker, telling her to meet him as his friends watch from behind a bush. Kashima wanted her to reject him at least so he could move on. However, when he confesses, she actually agrees to date him, considering she is single at the moment. Kashima is flabbergasted, and soon he walks her home. On the way, she tells him about guys dumping her, because she's faithful in a relationship, and has not met someone she would fall in love with. They reach her home and invite him, who confusingly does, but is still unable to process that he's dating Shirakawa. They are enjoying tea in her room when she starts to undress, thinking that is what he wants from her. But Kashima refuses telling her to wait until they are good with each other, making him realize that she has actually never been loved. She understands him and says that she thought it is her responsibility and duty towards her boyfriend, which makes Kashima understand why she would get dumped after a few months because she was always available. Both of them then agree on taking it slow and not do it unless she wants although Kashima regrets that decision. The next day at school, Kashima could not contain his excitement remembering that he is dating Shirakawa. He saw a bunch of texts from her that she is running late and tells her to hurry. By the time she reaches class has already started, and she winks at him, leaving him flustered. During lunch break, Kashima's friends corner him telling him to explain what happened between him and Shirakawa yesterday, and if they did something to which Kashima responds that he was not ready to do it, making his friends laugh at his stupidity. But he explains that since they would be dating for a while, he would get another chance. But both his friends laugh at him again and tell him that she, a beauty, would never date a nerd like him and probably chose him for a day. He is competing with class toppers here, and he lost his chance making him rethink his decision of ever dating Shirakawa in the first place. So he walks back to class only for Shirakawa to cling at him explaining that she dreamt about him. One of her friends were shooting daggers with her eyes at him, causing him to leave with an excuse. But Shirakawa kept clinging on to him and talking to him more and more, making people look at them. So he told her to not, to talk to him in school. And without thinking, he says that she could talk to him off of the premises of the school, leading her to think that he is asking her on a date. The following night, she FaceTimes Kashima, who was busy searching for date options that what they are doing tomorrow. So he suggests that they could do something she wants making her blush, since no one has ever asked her this. The next day they meet at a shopping mall, and he watches her shop. She goes from shop to shop tiring, but he tells her that he enjoyed watching her. She gets a call from her best friend Nicole, who was throwing fire at Kashima, 
with her eyes leading him to think that she is probably telling Shirakawa to stay away from him, and that he should not be falling for her. That night, he stares at his text which he sent to Shirakawa, panicking that she has not responded, leading him to think that he has been dumped after a while of dating. The next day in school he came across Shirakawa, talking to the school's soccer team inviting her to watch them, while Kashima's friends console him. When he reaches home he gets a text from Shirakawa, telling him to meet her at the station park, causing him to think that she is about to break up with him. So with a heavy heart, he reaches the side address, preparing to face the dump. But she surprises him with a matching phone case, instead telling him that she waited all night at the place because it is a limited edition piece, causing him to cry and burst out his feelings. Both of them then walk home, and he shares his story about middle school love, where he was rejected causing him to be underconfident with girls. So she tells him that even her parents dated in middle school and have been together ever since. She confesses that she wants something like that. A car races by them, and Kashima states blabbering about the sports car. She says that she is like one, as she raced in life in hopes of wanting something good and gained a lot of experience but he tells her that she should not feel that way and enjoy making memories. Shirakawa tells her friend Nicole about this that night, who tells her to, not to, try, to hard to be with Kashima, but she says she is enjoying around him. The next day in class a new student is welcomed, but Kashima recognizes her. She was the girl who rejected him in middle school. Her name was Karuse. During class both Karuse and Kashima make small talk, while he tries to deflect her idea from his mind. He then meets Nicole, who tells him that Shirakawa's birthday is coming up, so he should prepare for it and make her happy. Both of them are discussing how to plan it. Kashima is asking her what Shirakawa would like while someone clicks a picture of them. Later that day, when Kashima is going through the station to go back to the school, he runs into Shirakawa, who shows him a rumor on his phone that he and Nicole are dating. The picture clicked prior was also attached to it. Shirakawa seemed upset while Kashima quickly tells her that he had actually asked Nicole about her birthday, since he had forgotten to ask her before, explaining the picture. Shirakawa sighed in relief and promised to spend the entire day of Sunday with him to celebrate her birthday. She runs off saying that he would not want to be seen with her, while Kashima stands thinking whether she was jealous. He decides on making the perfect birthday for him, as she had given him a phone case, and spends the entire week working on it, and takes her to a fun place making her smile remembering that Nicole gave him a good idea. He took her to a boba shop, since Nicole told him that she likes it. They enjoyed it while Shirakawa said she would pay, but Kashima did as a gift. He then told her that he spent the entire week trying out different kinds of boba places for her, and pulls out a map marking the current shop they are in currently, telling her the different kinds of boba's places to try so they go to each shop. And the day is well spent while Shirakawa asks for the map as a present. They both enjoy a good time. Next day at school, Kashima gets to hear rumors about Shirakawa that she changes boyfriends like clothes and expects them to pay. He feels that someone has spread them on purpose before reaching class where he has to share his book with Kuruse, who then confesses to him. She realizes that she likes him, but he finally tells her that he has a girlfriend. Kuruse is shocked, pressures him to tell her who she is, but he refuses to tell her anything, thinking Shirakawa would be embarrassed. During lunch break, Kashima and his friends are teasing each other when Nicole walks in, making the two of his friends rush away. Kashima thanks Nicole for helping her to surprise Shirakawa, to which she questions if he knows about the rumors regarding Shirakawa. He nods at her. Later he watches Shirakawa go in a classroom with a boy, so he follows them, only to hear that the guy is asking her out. But Shirakawa refuses his confession, telling him that she is dating someone, to which he asks, who? Since he thought that she is single but she tells him that it is a private secret so she cannot tell him. The man tries to annoy her by saying that she must be dating a loser, so she is not telling her name because she is embarrassed. Kashima is listening to all of this, but is surprised when Shirakawa says that she is not embarrassed, but is in fact really happy, and would tell it to the world but her boyfriend is shy. After that, in class, Kashima realizes that he thought Shirakawa would be embarrassed to be with him, but she is not. Kuruse then returns Kashima's book to him, and proceeds to tell him the rumors about Shirakawa. She explains that one of her ex-boyfriends are her friends, and they told her that she is greedy and expects them to pay for her. Kashima tries to deny it, and tells her if she has told this to anyone,
because none of it is true about her because her ex-boyfriend is lying. He says that she is the perfect girlfriend and ends up shouting in front of the whole class that he is Shirakawa's boyfriend, making everyone's eyes widen, including Kuruse, Shirakawa, and Nicole, along with his friends. Everyone seems to be shocked by their revelation, as Shirakawa is flabbergasted, while everyone realizes that she is actually a really sweet girl, and all the rumors about her were actually false. On the other hand, Kuruse speeds off from the class and Kashima runs after her before asking her if she was the one who spread these disgusting rumors about Shirakawa. She nodded, telling him that she is jealous of her, as everyone loves her, and she wishes to be number one, but no matter how hard she tries, Shirakawa is always prioritized. It is then revealed that Shirakawa and Kuruse are fraternal twins. This shocks Kashima, and she explains that their parents divorced, so she took her mother's name. She is the one who always had to move and change herself, while Shirakawa had to stay with her father, and was always loved. While for her, that was not the case, because she has always been not able to express her feelings unlike her outgoing sister. Kashima then says that he understands her because even he has issues with sharing his feelings, and sometimes gets underconfident, but when he looks at Shirakawa, who is straightforward and outgoing, he is surprised because she is naturally like that. He tells her that she should not try too hard to be like her, because that would only pain her. So instead, she should just wait for someone who would actually love her. Till then, she should not try to be something she is not. Kuruse is speechless, but suddenly slips from the stairs, and Kashima catches her, but she turns away and tells him to leave, so he does. He then meets Shirakawa and Nicole in front of the class, who praises him for his act, while Shirakawa asks him if he is okay with everyone knowing about them dating. While walking home, he tells her that he could not bear the thought of someone spreading rumors making her get teary. She then asks if he knows about Kuruse and her twin sisters, to which he nods, and Shirakawa tells him that her sister is a very nice girl, and then wonders who could have possibly spread such rumors about her, while Kashima decides to keep this mouth shut. Later. Both Shirakawa and Kashima sit down to eat, as she asks him if they could do something he likes, so he tells her that he likes to watch streaming videos of a gamer named Ken, and continues to speed talk about his amazing talent which Shirakawa expresses interest, watching those videos. Kashima is surprised, and both of them watch the videos together while she moves closer to him, making Kashima think that he wants to kiss her. The next day he is not wanting to go to school, thinking everyone would call him out for dating Shirakawa. But that did not happen, as everyone was friendly to him. He realizes that people do not care that much, and he was stressing for nothing later during lunch break. He asks his friends for advice, since he is a noob, so they laugh at him for asking them, but decide to help him regardless of being jealous. But soon they start screaming at him, as they also have no idea how to do it. So Kashima thinks that he should start by holding hands first. He then decides to meet her at school to ask her out on a date to the amusement park. Both of them meet, while Kashima keeps fantasizing about holding her hand. She shows him the food she made for him, which he enjoys, and then goes to the boats but is unable to hold her hand, as she had already jumped in. After a while of enjoying the boat, he thinks of holding her hand to help her out, but she jumps out again. Kashima was awfully quiet thinking about how to touch her leading Shirakawa to think that perhaps he wants to break up. She tells him that she does not want to break up, but Kashima says that he was just thinking about another boat ride. They go there again, but on a different one, and this time helps her in by holding her hand. After a few minutes of rowing, the boat Shirakawa expresses that she wished to hold hands with him for a while now, leading Kashima to expose himself as well. She then leans in to kiss him, leaving both of them flustered and embarrassed. After a short time, they walk back together talking about how he should just call her Runa, instead of Shirakawa. But he fails. She said she would wait for him and tells him that she wants to fall in love with him. Meanwhile, Kurus at her home is not able to remove her feelings for Kashima and decides on becoming like Runa so she could steal him from her. The next day both Shirakawa and Kashima are walking home together when she tells him that their one-month anniversary is close by, so she suggests that they go to the beach together Kashima is mentally flustered thinking about her in a swimsuit, and says yes. Then both of them sit down in a restaurant. While he explains to her how to solve her English translation questions, she also expresses that Kashima is not the type to cheat, to which he nods, 
The next day at school, Shirakawa shows her. Her test results and excludes happiness. She even praises him for scoring good in his exams, while Kuruse watches them from afar. Both of Kashima's friends, Ichi and Shi, are also happy with their test results. Later that day, Kuruse takes the chance to talk to Kashima. Asking him to tutor her for her English is not that good, but he politely denies saying that he already promised Shirakawa-san. She tries to reason that she does not know anyone here to help her, and she could also ask him about her math problem, so he suggests she talks to Ichi. She finally gets to exchange her number with him. Later on, he is waiting for Shirakawa at the station to go to the beach, but Kurus keeps texting him, asking him if he is free on a certain day to tutor her, to which he refuses, while she tries to reason for another day. Just then, Shirakawa arrives and both of them set off to their beach date. He sees her in a swimsuit for the first time and ends up malfunctioning, but she jokes that he should enjoy it and they spend the day under the sun. She asks him to rub some sunscreen on her, adding more to his crimson cheeks. They spend the day swimming and playing ball. He compliments her as well before finally reaching night, but unfortunately, a typhoon hit the city, so they had to spend the night at a hotel. Kashima could not digest the fact that they have to share a whole room for the night and take turns bathing. He overthinks what could possibly happen between them. Soon after eating, both of them lay down side by side as Kashima is not able to go to sleep. So Shirakawa suggests they do it causing him to almost say yes, until he realizes that she is only doing this because she does not want him to wait. He tells her that he would not do it unless she actually wants to do it, to which Shirakawa smiles and tells him that she wants to spend more days with him and asks to hug him. Both of them hug as she asks him to promise that they would celebrate their two-month anniversary. The next day, he drops her at her house before walking home but he meets Nicole on his way, who invites him to eat at the restaurant she works at. He sits down and continues to eat, while she asks him if things are going well between him and Ashirakawa. So he explains that they enjoyed it, and he really likes her. Nicole explains that most of her boyfriends leave her after the two-month mark because she is clingy, and they would either cheat or become bored eventually dumping her. She tells him that Shirakawa must be worried about that. He promises to not to put her in such a position. While Kuruse was staring at the text Kashima did not bother responding to, she decided to do something, a vile smirk on her face. On his way home, he is thinking about his interaction with Nicole and takes an oath to be a good boyfriend. But he receives a call from Kuruse and is surprised that it is actually Runa from her number, who is currently at her mother's house, and wants to meet him at the storage area in school. He immediately makes way to the school. It is already pretty dark now. Many students were leaving. He goes to the storage room only to meet Shirakawa, who insists that she wants to do it. Making his eyes widen at how her feelings changed in a day, she moves closer to him. On the other hand, Shirakawa is actually at home talking to her friend Nicole about how she likes Kashima and he is her last man. Back at the storage area, the girl pretending to be Shirakawa keeps telling Kashima that she wants to do it with him. But as she leans over to hug him, he realizes that it is not Shirakawa, but someone else, and immediately pushes her away. Only Thing realizes that it is none other than Kuruse herself. He is mind-boggled, and confronts her about this situation to which she confesses that she dressed up as Runa to fool him, and invite him here since their voices sound the exact same on call. She pleads with him to choose her. She even adds that she would give all her first to him, unlike Runa, and tries to manipulate him, but he immediately pushes her away making it clear that he would not do anything that would hurt Shirakawa. He wants her smiling and happy. He would never cheat on her. He also adds that it would be unfair to her as well. Suddenly a guard comes to check the storage room, but they had already escaped from the window and are now sitting on a bench in the park, where Kashima asks her if she did this to take revenge on Shirakawa too, which she rejects this revelation, telling him that she did this because she liked him. She wanted him and found this the only way to actually be with him and apologizes for it. She cries on his shoulder. The next day at school, Kashima is thinking about how he should cut off all contact with Kurusa and tell Shirakawa about this. But people are already gossiping around him. He gets to know through his friends that someone took a picture of Kurusa and Kashima at the park last night and termed it as him a cheater, calling him names. He confronts Kurusa about this, but she denies the rumors telling him 
that she has enough pride to not to be desperate. She promises that she would tell everyone that nothing like that happened. As they were leaving the classroom, she asked if they had been together today, if she had accepted his confession back then. Unfortunately, this was heard by Shirakawa, who questions if he did something worth apologizing for. She runs away crying, leaving her phone which breaks after coming in contact with the stone floor. Nicole slaps him, calling him disgusting. He waits for Shirakawa the entire day to explain everything, but she never returns, and just like the summer vacations were announced. He spends a lot of time texting her, but no response came. He even went to her house but chickened out at the last minute. When he was in summer class studying, he got a text from his friends who currently at the beach telling him that his girlfriend is with a guy causing him to run out of class and go to the station, after a long journey which made it to evening. He finally reached the bar only to figure out that the man in the picture with Runa was her uncle. He sits down and explains to her that he never cheated on her, and that he rejected Karus's confession, causing her to apologize as well for not talking to him. She even thanks him for being there for her sister. Both of them reconcile. After that, they go to Runa's grandmother's house, and she asks him to stay over for the rest of the summer vacations with her, as they could get jobs and enjoy time together. Kashima agrees to do exactly as she says. The next day, both of them are seen working at the bar as Kashima's parents send his stuff over as well as his school supplies. Kashima takes orders helping Shirakawa out. When her uncle Mao was out to get supplies, two boys came over to tease Shirakawa. But Kashima tries to step in, and they walk away when they find out that both of them are dating. Later that evening, Kashima is studying for his college entrance exam, while Shirakawa applauds him for studying hard and tells her that everyone has plans for their future. Her best friend, Nicole, is going to apply for a professional manicurist course after they graduate. But since her mother is the only one supporting her, so she works all the time they save up for tuition. Her other friend, Akari, is going to apply for a fashion designer course. Kashima then asks what her plans are for the future, so she says that he has not really thought about it, considering she has already achieved her high school goal, which was to date someone she could be with forever making Kashima almost choke and blush. She adds that she wanted to have a happy family with both her parents and Kuruse, but that was not able to happen. So she wants to build a family of her own, have children, and a loving husband. This causes Kashima to later think that he should study hard to provide her with all this. Later, both of them go shopping for potatoes, since Shirakawa wanted to make him meat and potatoes. While back at Kuruse's house, her mother tells her that they have to go visit grandmother for the festival, and also adds that Runa is there with her boyfriend, causing her to tell her mother that she does not wish to go, because she has already made plans. When Kashima and Shirakawa get to know this, they realize that it is probably because she does not want to face them, and Kashima suggests that they should give her time, while Runa tells him that she would try to become friends with Kuruse first, then take baby steps towards a better relationship. Mao comes home with Shirakawa's phone and looks through it, only to see that she has missed out on a lot of trends. She then proceeds to make one with Kashima. The next day, Kashima is paid for his work, and Mao suggests he buy a gift for Runa, as it is their two-month anniversary. So he goes out to buy something, but when he comes home, he is surprised to see Shirakawa dressed up in a kimono. He compliments her, and dresses up as well before leaving for the festival. Both of them enjoy their time catching fishes, eating corn dogs, and spending time together while he keeps asking her if her feet are okay. On their way back home, he repeats the same question, leading her to question the statement itself. He says that probably because he has never gone out with a girl, so he thought she might be tired, wearing the wooden slippers. Shirakawa does not say anything, and instead continues to walk in silence, as Kashima tells her that this is his first time going out with a girl, and eating corn dogs, causing Shirakawa to cry over her past experiences, as she wanted to feel the same way Kashima did with her, since it was his first time with him. She sobbed into her palms, wishing she could erase her memories, while Kashima told her that everything she feels with him, that she has not felt before with anyone, is new, and that she should not worry about it. He then pulls out a gift for her, wishing her their two-month anniversary. It was a moonstone ring causing her to smile in happiness as he put it on her finger. Together, both of the lovebirds watch the fireworks immersing into a kiss. After summer vacations are over, both Kashima and Shirakawa go back to their usual routine of school, getting busy in the new term, while Shirakawa tries to become friends with Karus. But each time she would get close, she would fail. Later on, Kashima was with his friends telling him how he spent his summer vacations with Shirakawa, while they hissed about them surviving through the vacations by watching videos. 
They side-eyed him for having such good luck. Kashima then suggested that they would join him in playing survival games with Shirakawa, Nicole, and Akari, causing them both to be shocked, but soon they were all dressed up for the game as Akari recognized Ichi telling him that they were in the same class last year. He blushed and also fainted. The game started and both the teams had to stay out of each other's way, or they would get shot. However, Akari shot Ischi, and he was eliminated. But then Nicole shot the rest, and as she was about to shoot Shirakawa, Kashima came in front of her and got eliminated. Only Runa and Nicole were left, so they started shooting, but Runa won. After that, the six of them went to enjoy drinks, and Izchi got Akari's attention by talking about his interests. Like a geek, he proceeded to blabber about it. Same happened with Ichi and Nicole, who talked about her manicure craze. Soon, all of them went off to their homes, except for Shirakawa and Kashima, who decided on a date to the amusement park and enjoyed the ride on the Ferris wheel where Kashima badly wanted to kiss Runa. She seemed to have gotten the notion and leaned in to kiss him. After this, Kashima went to his cram school to prepare for his exams, but saw Kurusi entering causing him to hurriedly put everything into his bag and scramble out of the classroom, through the floor, finally reaching the door. But someone stopped him. It was Senior who helped him out of the classroom, taking him to a drink. He asked about the situation, since he had noticed him running away from Kurus. He thought perhaps she was his ex or stalker, but upon knowing the whole story, he realized that he was dating the said girl's sister and promised to help him by keeping an eye out for her and told him to study hard. The next day at school, the teacher came in to pick students for the annual November festival, but no one seems to be interested, except for Kuruse. Seeing her, even Shirakawa joined in, and Kashima realized this is how she would get her sister back. After Kashima, Shirakawa, and Kuruse taking part in the school committee, Akira also joined in, but Nicole could not because she had work. Ichija also joined in and took part in the helping committee, while Kashima, Shirakawa, and Kurus had to pick out the design for the pamphlet but had different opinions based on aesthetics. Shirakawa tried to make a small talk with her about her hobbies, but hers matched Kashima's. She liked watching videos and streaming videos, but Shirakawa was dumbfounded. After that, Kashima went to cram class, only to meet the senior with green hair again, who asked him about his current situation with Kuruse, and amidst of that, also told him that he once dated a girl in middle school who actually suggested he change his hair, which made him popular. Kashima asked if he dumped her because of that but he did not agree nor did he decline. After that, Kashima was on his way home through the station when he collided with Karus, and they made small talk. She told him that her reason for coming to this school was not to harass Shirakawa, but was to meet her. She wanted her to introduce her to the class. Kashima realized that both Shirakawa and Karuse loved each other and wanted to be together, but were not able to express these feelings to each other. Karuse was upset that she had to leave and change her name, while Shirakawa was loved by many. Both of them got into the train together, but then as they were walking, he offered to walk her home and accidentally fell down, leading to his books rampaging out of his bag. Karusi saw his book and realized that they both go to the same cram school. Both of them then walked away. Later that night, Kashima was talking to Shirakawa, who kept fussing over how different their tastes are. But Kashima just smiled, telling her that it would be okay. Soon the day for sports came for the school, and Shirakawa had taken part in a marathon, while Kashima cheered for her, and she won. In the next game, she grabbed Kashima and ran with him to the end of the line, and they won again. In this game, she had to run with something she treasured, and it was Kashima. While Akari was getting ready with Karus for the cheerleading battle, she told Akari that she invited her mother to see as well. But when they came outside and saw Shirakawa talking to their mother, she ran back in, excusing herself. While Shirakawa was telling her mother that she won the race, who seemed to be proud of her, but asked the whereabouts of Karus, so both Runa and Kashima went to look for her inside the school. They split up, and Kashima went to the rooftop and found her. She was standing near the fence facing the ground, as she asked him his reason for being here, so he enlightened her with the fact that her mother is looking for her. She responded that she was just supposed to be her mother, and not Shirakawa, because she invited her to watch her perform, but seeing them talk broke her heart. Kashima tried to reason with her that she should get down and cheer, but she asks, why is he caring for her, and if that is because she is Runa's sister, but he said he cares because they are classmates. This angers her, and she tells him to leave because she still has feelings for him. She knew what he felt, but she could not help herself. She did not wish to fall more than she already has, so she hissed at him to leave. On the other side, Runa had already heard all of this, so she silently made her way down while Kashima was left speechless upon her confession. The next day, 
The three of them had to choose between the pamphlet cover. Shirakawa wanted it to be blingy with glitter, while Kuruse wanted it to be monochrome so that families and boys would join in too. The teachers asked Kashima to give an opinion for the male audience, so he contemplated between the designs, but ended up choosing the monochrome one. After this situation, Runa and Kashima were walking home when he apologized for choosing Kurusa's design for the pamphlet over hers, but she said that it is fine before walking ahead of him. She also added with a low voice that he should date Kurusa instead of her since both of them have more similarities in games, hobbies, and she and him had nothing in common. Kashima tries to explain, but she cuts him off by saying that she would not be texting him for a while, and that he should think about them dating, and runs away leaving a dumbfounded Kashima. The following day at school, Kashima shows the teacher the final design for the pamphlet, to which she closes the pamphlet committee, and he goes to find Runa to tell her about the pamphlet work being done, and thinks of telling Kuru's at cram school. But he sees Runa talking to someone on the phone, politely leading him to think it is probably someone older. But before he could call after her, she had already left while his mind kept rummaging through if it was a girl or a boy. With these thoughts, he is with Nicole cleaning the classroom and thinks of asking her about who Runa was meeting, but she beats him to it and says that it is disappointing at how he was not able to make Runa happy and that love is not just games. After being done with his work, Kashima was walking home all alone when Akari catches up with him in order to tell him something important, so she and Kashima sit down at a diner. She bombards him with the idea that Runa might have a sugar daddy leaving Kashima in a black hollow. She explained to him that she saw her at the mall where she was buying merch with an older looking man and she also had expensive items with her. Kashima asked her if she believed Runa would go so far in this and actually make a sugar daddy, to which Akari tells him that she also tends to have a reckless side, and since both of them are at odds, so she might have done something because of insecurity. Kashima then got up telling her that he trusts Runa, and if something happens then it would be his fault, but as he leaves the diner, he calls Senpai, the older student he met at cram school, and asks him a favor. While Kuruse is at home looking at the final cover for the pamphlet, and mentally curses at Kashima for not taking Runa's side, as she looks at the soft toy which she had taken back from Runa as a kid. She realizes that Runa had always been such a nice, gentle, and caring girl, and that she wishes for her to be happy with Kashima, but her own feelings are meddling in between. The next day, they are walking through the halls of the school, while Senpai seemed uneasy, and Kashima was telling him that he just needs to find out who Runa's sugar daddy is. But soon Akari came pointing at Senpai, telling Kashima, that he is the same guy she saw with Runa the other day since he was the sugar daddy. Kashima is flabbergasted. He mentally screams as both of them are now sitting in the cafeteria with Kashima eyeing him like he would bite him and calls him names for going out with his girlfriend while a scared senpai denies those rumors telling him that it is not what he thinks it is. He explains that Runa is the friend of his ex-girlfriend and because she saw him and wanted to talk to him, he could not deny her cuteness, making Kashima's blood boil but soon he realized that the ex he is referring to is none other than Nicole, because she was talking about her ex. She dated for two weeks in middle school after the survival games. She had not moved on from him. Senpai nodded at this telling him that Runa wanted him to talk to her, but he could not, for he dumped her just to date others girls, although she was the only one that liked him truly when he was a dork, and he thought it would be pathetic to waltz into her life after all this while. Kashima gave him advice to learn from his past mistakes, and if he still has feelings for her, he should give it a shot rather than regret it afterwards. Senpai was appalled. Suddenly Ichija and Ichii came rushing to him telling him that some guys are annoying Runa and Nicole. Both Kashima and Senpai rush at the spot where two college students were trying to tease them, but Nicole stood against them until Kashima came and took Runa. Nicole was left to deal with them, but Senpai reached there telling the boys that she was his girlfriend, causing them to apologize and move back. He grabbed her arm and apologized for taking a long while making tears stream down her cheeks. Both of them hugged and reconciled, while Ichija decided to confess to Akari. As he finally does, Akari asks him why he likes her. If it is because of her looks, then she should do the same. And if he confessed to force her into accepting him when they do not even know each other properly, then she cannot be with him, and leaves him while Aruna apologizes for this and explains to them that many boys have confessed to her. But she is serious about dating and wants to know the person before dating. While the three boys sit down talking about their cruel fate, Ichi realizes that he stood no chance against Senpai, and Ichija was rejected badly while Kashima had his own issues. But both of them applauded him for making it this far. Kashima suddenly stood up running to find Shirakawa as she rampaged through the entire school, 
only to find her at the balcony, watching the concert where Senpai and Nicole were also sitting. Runa explains that Akari told her about the misunderstanding, and that she has that purse because of her grandma, and thanks Kashima for making Senpai meet Nicole. She proceeds to add that, it made her realize that if you actually like someone, you should tell them and be with them because life is short. But Kashima disagrees, telling her that life is long considering the coming years, and confesses that he wants to enjoy those years with her. Both of them are silently watching the concert. The next day both Shirakawa and Kashima are sitting in a park talking about how quickly the festival went by and that Nicole is doing great with the senpai. She told him that she plans on making a move on him tonight, causing Kashima to get flustered. Shirakawa then asks about Ichija and how he is coping with rejection, to which he tells her that he is cold at heart and is putting all of that into gaming. He adds that Ichi is not doing well either. Shirakawa sighs, hoping that they could play again together someday, and both of them part ways. The next day at school, Shirakawa and Akari are talking about Nicole's date senpai, and as she walks in, they bombard him with questions failing to notice her baggy eyes. She explains that senpai broke up with her because he wanted to focus on his exams and would not respond to her. Kashima is surprised, and Ichi passes a mean comment causing Nicole to shout at him. Later that day at cram school, Kashima talks to Senpai about him dumping Nicole, to which he tries to explain that if something like that would happen, then it would keep happening. And before anyone could notice, life and exams are over, and high school days are precious, so he is pretty sure that she would cry and get over it. At lunch, he asks Kashima about his dating life with Shirakawa, and if something has changed since the festival, to which he explains that he feels off the bars. He wants to make Runa happy, but at the same time he is afraid to say something that would hurt her. Senpai laughs, saying that with this attitude, he would never have female friends, but Kashima tells him that having female friends is not in his list of achievements, because due to Runa he was able to talk to people and come out his shell. She made him a better person, and he does not wish to have another female in his life other than her. This touches Senpai's heart, and he regrets not being this wise there years prior. After cram school, Kashima is on his way home when he meets Kuruse, and they walk home together in silence until they have to part ways. He tells her that they should stop talking alone, while Karusi understands telling him that even though she likes him and those feelings would take a while to disappear, she likes Runa more and wants them to be happy. She agrees on no contact, but as she is leaving, Kashima confesses that she was her first love, making her teary for being the first somewhere, and they part ways. Kashima gets a call from Runa, and as they are talking about meeting up, Kashima hears a scream. It was none other than Karuse, and a man was harassing her. Runa heard this over the phone, and Kashima took Karuse to the police station, who was not able to find an earring. But Kashima then leaves talking on the phone with Runa, explaining what had happened. And when he was about to explain why he was with Runa, she decides on meeting tomorrow because she has something to say to him as well. The next day, both of them meet in front of the cram school, as Kashima tries to explain. In order to avoid being misunderstood, she already tells him that she wishes to break up, and that she was thinking about this long before this happened. She then asks if he felt the same way because of everything, but he is not able to say anything. While Shirakawa thanks that she had a good time with him, she was the first one to initiate a breakup. And even though she wished to experience more firsts with him, probably it is for the better. Just then, Runa sees another couple enjoying themselves in the park, reminding her of her first date with Kashima when he watches her shopping. Kashima then notices another couple holding hands, reminding him of the first time he held hands with Shirakawa at the amusement park date. Runa then notices a couple studying, and instantly flashes back to when Kashima was helping her with English homework. Kashima watches a group of her friends, making him remember the survival games they played together with everyone. Then they notice a child playing with the car, reminding them of the time they talked about sports cars, as Kashima is reminded of what she told about falling in love, and that she has achieved her high school goal of being with someone forever, and she wants her children to have an affectionate father. As both of them are silent and in their own worlds, Kashima starts sobbing loudly, repeating that he does not wish to break up, and only told Karus to stop talking to him. He cannot change the past, but does not wish to break up. Runa also starts crying, and finally confesses that she is in love with him. She sobs her heart out, telling him that loving him makes her anxious, and she does not wish for him to hate her. She understands that the past cannot be changed, but she does not want to switch it up either, causing Kashima to shout at her to tell him what is on her mind. But she keeps saying that she does not want to say anything ill to her, while he tells her to keep talking, even if it is unpleasant. He pulls her into a desperate hug, telling her that it is okay to make mistakes since they are still high school students. He confesses that he wishes to grow into an adult with her. Runa is taken aback by this confession, and both of them sob into each other's arms. 
She then cups his cheeks, telling him that she is sorry, as she was in the wrong. As Kashima is still crying and was about to say something when the kid from earlier bumps his car at the back of his head, but both of them laugh it off while his parents apologize for it. After that, both of them are holding hands watching the sunset, as she apologized for making him miss his classes. He tells her that it is fine. She also tells him that she was suppressing her feelings for him to which he told her to, not to do it again. Both of them kissed. Runa and Kashima are walking hand in hand when Runa tells him that she is the happiest person alive with him causing Kashima to get flustered, as she promises to do as he says, and tell her true feelings to him. Runa clings on to him and asks what he wants to do on Christmas Eve, and then says she has something in mind making Kashima think that she is referring to doing it, as he also wants to do it with her. But to his disappointment, she was referring to him helping him with the Laude operation. Both of them now sit down to drink as Shirakawa discusses the plan. She tells him that if she is successful in making Maria her sister again, then she could finally live the dream she has given up on. She wanted to make her family one again, and for that she wants her mother and father to get remarried, since her father is single and her mother just got divorced. She thinks she can do it, and also says that she is sure that they still like each other. Kashima questions how she would do that, and explains the Lotte operation, telling him that she read a book in elementary school, where two twins meet each other, and realize that if they switch places, they could mend their family back together. And that is exactly what Runa wanted. She had already talked to Kuruse about this earlier. Karus also wanted to do it, so Kashima understood that she shall do it on Christmas Eve, and have a family dinner leading him to say that she might not need him. But she said that the formal introduction of a boyfriend can only bring her father out of work. She confirms if he is okay with this setting. Kashima assured her that he would take part in it and help her with this. Runa says that it would be fun if both her and Karuse read letters together, so the next day at school, in class, Runa is writing a letter when Maria helps her while Kashima watches. The next moment Ichija walks in and greets Kashima, who almost suffers a heart attack seeing him. Ichija lost weight and made himself like an idol during his time away, and everyone was drooling over him. All the girls could not take their eyes off of him. While Akari was flabbergasted, she could not believe her eyes. During a free lecture, she ranted with her friends at how cool Ichija has become, and exactly like her idol, it was unfair. They suggested that she talk to him again, but she does not think it is a good idea, as she rejected him badly after the cultural festival. It would be pathetic for her to do so. On the other hand, Nicole views this, and is now sitting alone somewhere else with her phone in her hand contemplating whether she should block Senpai or not. When Ichi stands in front of her, he makes a stupid conversation starter that both of their surnames have the letters N.A. in their names, so it must be destiny to be together. She tells him that he is ten years early to flirt with her, but he reasons that he has to do something causing her to sigh and leave, telling him that she has a boyfriend while Kashima hears all of this. Poor Ichi is sad that everyone is experiencing youth, except him. Later on in cram school, the teacher suddenly shouts at everyone that exams are only a year away, so they should not get too comfortable during Christmas. Realization hits Kashima like a brick, as she understands that meeting Runa's father meant to actually face him, and that is too heavy on him, as he is an introvert. Later, he is standing in front of a Santa Claus statue trying to practice his lines and his introduction while he keeps stuttering, and Runa appears in front of him asking him what he's doing well as he regains his posture, telling her that it is nothing. Both then continue to walk towards the restaurant with Runa clinging onto him. They reach the place, and Runa greets her mother, shocking her as they explain that they would have a nice dinner together as a family. She questions them if their father knows about this, to which Runa explains that he is just coming since he is unaware of this setting so her mother agrees, saying that she can do this for her children. After a minute, Runa's father arrives, and is surprised to see his ex-wife, when another lady stands near him only for them to find out that she is his girlfriend, and he wanted Runa to meet her, since she is introducing Kashima. Her mother asks if he would remarry to, which he nods. Runa is shocked, and ends up crying since she did not expect this to happen. All of them return home and Kashima offers to take her home, as Kurusi tells her to be careful, and tells Runa to visit any time she wants. Kashima takes her home and proceeds to say something, but thinks she needs to be alone, and proceeds to leave. But she stops him saying that he should stay since her father has something to do after dinner. Kashima does not know what to do. He says that he would respect Runa's will, and would not do anything until that. But she cries, asking him if he would abandon her too as she cries into his chest. She asks him to hold her tightly, but when he does he feels that her body temperature is rising, and uses the thermometer to see she has a fever. He decides on taking her to her room, and uses wet towels to calm her down. 
as he holds her hand telling her that she is his only girl. While Ichi is outside of the restaurant where Nicole works and wishes to ask her out and waits for a chance, but as she comes off her shift, she sudden starts running somewhere else confusing him, so he follows her, only to see that she is running into a cram school. Nicole checks each classroom, only to find her love interest sleeping in one, so she walks in and tells him that she shall be waiting until his exams are over, even if wants her not to. She then leaves while he follows her outside tying his scarf around her as they both smile, while Ichi walks away from there only to get scolded by Ichija on FaceTime to come home quickly to watch Ken, and he hurries home. Ichija is playing games and plans on doing it till dawn, while Akaria is staring at his pictures, and Karus realizes that both Runa and Kashima are the perfect match. Later, on Christmas morning, Runa is feeling better and is thankful to be spending the day with him. She gives him a present which are amulets, and he dresses up as Santa to give her his. Runa is speechless and then tells him that that is something her father used to do, so he panics and gives her the present with her matching moonstone earrings to go with the ring. Runa smiles widely and tells him that her Santa is now him because he brings her happiness, and now she can accept her dad's happiness as well. Kashima thinks that he wants to enjoy all his days with her. The following day Runa is talking to Nicole about her day and shares that Kashima did not try to do anything with her leading her to overthink. So Nicole reassures her that it was because of her being sick. Runa confesses that she thinks about it a lot, and Nicole says that is true love, her first experience with Ryuto, making her happy that she could give him one of her firsts too. After that, she takes him to a photo booth, where they cosplay and take pictures together, where she confesses that she is ready to do it with him.